A couple days ago, Apple quietly refreshed the MacBook Pros with faster CPUs and a fourth generation butterfly switch for the keyboard. The rest of the laptop remains the same as the 2018 MacBook Pro, so this won't be like a full review, but I'll quickly gloss over the laptop and talk about the performance of the new 8-core i9 CPUs. So quick review of the 2019 MacBook Pro. The build quality is literally best in the business. The keyboard, top deck, and the screen are all super rigid. Hinge tension is perfect and my 2016 MacBook Pro feels exactly the same as it did when I first bought it, so it's held up great so far. The keyboard is clicky and tactile, great layout but super low travel. The speakers and the trackpad are by far the best on any laptop, although the speakers have now been tuned so that the high bass is cranked way up and that just kind of muffles the mid-range a lot, especially with vocals. The specs are pretty good, 8-core CPU, Vega 20 GPU, 32 gigs of RAM with an option for a 4TB SSD. Fan noise is reasonable even on Macs, and there's also manual fan control available using an app called Max Fan Control. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. It's got 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack, and there's an 83 watt hour battery inside that will last you about 8 hours with light use, and 12 hours of video playback. That's streaming through Wi-Fi, brightness at 75%, and nothing else running in the background. I'd also like to mention some of the flaws that have sprung up over the last few years since the launch of the 2016 MacBook Pros, which was the first one with this new redesign. The keyboard failures are probably not because of dust and debris, but rather the CPU and the GPU heating up the switches so hot to where they start failing. I'll link the Reddit post in the description, but the short of it is that they took a brand new MacBook Pro, they ran a stress test on it, and the keyboard started failing after about an hour. So unless these use new materials that have higher heat resistance, they're still gonna fail at the same rate as before. The stage light effect with the displays have been fixed with a longer cable, so that's good, but the thermal limitations of this super thin and compact design, remember it's like 25% smaller than the previous 2015 design, are still here. And when you shove an 8-core CPU that turbo boosts up to 5 GHz in a chassis that could barely cool the quad-core 6700HQ, you're not going to be able to push these new super powerful CPUs to their full potential. Now, the thermals are actually not as bad as you might expect. They're actually pretty good. It maintained 3.1 GHz on all cores while averaging temps in the low 90s. It's pretty impressive given how thin and small this laptop is, but it's not good enough to push the i9s to their full potential. So there's a couple things new with this refresh, mostly with the 15 inch, but the 13 inch also got updated as well. The non-touch bar version didn't get updated, that's still running 2017 KB Lake CPUs, but the 13 inch touch bar models got refreshed with the same Coffee Lake CPUs, except a couple hundred megahertz faster. The 15 inch models got the biggest upgrade. So these are now running eight core CPUs up from six cores on the 2018 models. It's the i9 9980H and the 9980HK. And because the thermals are so tight, both CPUs perform the same, so there's no real point in buying the higher spec. So I'd recommend going with the 2.3 gigahertz i9, that's the 9980H, and that's what I'll be benchmarking with. The other specs are that it's running 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD, and the Radeon Pro 560X. I did a video on the Vega 20, and the short of it is that some apps will perform twice as fast, like in Adobe Premiere, but others might perform like 15% faster compared to the 560X. It all depends on the application. Okay, so for the performance testing, I'll be using Final Cut for video editing, as well as some gaming benchmarks running Windows 10 natively. Exporting a 7 minute 4K video took 20% less time, and exporting a 30 second 8K video was so much faster that I thought something was wrong. But it wasn't. It's actually this much faster. As for games, I really hope you don't buy this thing primarily for games, even if you do have a deep pocket because it sucks compared to the new RTX GPUs. Here's a three-way comparison between this model, so the 560X, the 6-core MacBook Pro with the Vega 20, and the Razer Blade 15 with the RTX 2060. That one is also running the 6-core CPU. Lighter games will play no problem at 1080p high. AAA games from 2017 and older, like Doom or GTA 5, will play at medium to low settings, but newer and more demanding games like Battlefield 5 or Shadow of the Tomb Raider won't be able to maintain 60 FPS, not with the 560X at least. So overall thoughts on the 2019 MacBook Pro is that it's a good upgrade and the thermals are better than I expected, but we're still unsure about how reliable these new keyboards are. In fact, Apple actually included these new MacBook Pros in the keyboard replacement program right from the get-go, unlike the 2018s. 
It starts at $2,800, so their prices haven't really changed, but when you take a look at how thin and small this thing is, and how they're packing an 8 core CPU with a Vega 20 while still pulling 8 plus hours of battery life, that is pretty impressive. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment with what laptop you'd like to see next, and I'll see you guys next time.